Hey, it's Abdullah. What would a flagship Nokia Android device that was developed about a decade ago look like? This is a really hard question to answer, but what I will show you today is probably what kind of software experience it would have had. This is the Nokia Z launcher, developed in 2014 and released right after the Microsoft acquisition of Nokia's hardware phone division. It was probably developed as a plan B in case the Windows Phone era went sideways, which we all know it did. And the Z launcher is incredibly creative, especially for its time. It has a few Mego touches, some touches from Windows Phone, and Nokia pure font all over, which was glorious. Instead of a traditional home screen, Z Launcher had three. It studied how you use your phone and gave you six smart suggestions on the main home screen. These suggestions would change based on the time of day as well as what you were most likely to use at specific moments. It wasn't just limited to apps, but even contacts you like to talk to at specific times. And the more you use the launcher, the more it learns about your usage patterns and the smarter the suggestions become. Originally, you still had the dock icons below the suggestions. But what if you don't find what you want? You can spell it out. It's a very smart way of integrating search functionality by allowing you to scribble the letters of the apps you're looking for. You can only scribble one letter at a time though, but you can also search online for what you want, not just limited to things on the device. On the right, you have an app list organized alphabetically, a bit similar to Windows Phone's app list. And on the left, you had your widgets home screen, which you can customize. Using the Z launcher is very intuitive, and it was designed to work well with one hand, with the top of the screen devoid of any regularly used functions. I also love that the launcher uses the Nokia Pure font everywhere, which makes it look very sleek even today and very Nokia. Obviously, looking back at it now, it does have some flaws. For one, the widget screen is a hit and miss. The built-in widgets on Android just aren't that good and most popular apps don't have truly useful widgets. This made the customization aspect of Z Launcher quite limited. Not a deal breaker for me personally, but power users would probably want more control. Unlike Mego, where going back takes you to the screen you were previously on, Android still takes you back to your main home screen every single time. This adds an unnecessary step when you're trying to get in and out of certain apps when you're in the widget screen or the app list. Z Launcher also doesn't work well with current gestures so it would have required different gestures to interact with it optimally. Still, as a proof of concept, I really like the way they were going with this and wish they had continued developing it. It was ahead of its time and just plain smart. Another proof that software can still be improved from what we currently have right now. Also a very cool glimpse into an alternative reality where Nokia would have adopted Android. While you're still here, allow me to rant a bit about the state of mobile operating systems today. I'm a huge advocate for innovation within the software realm. And once upon a time, we had many different operating systems with almost completely different ways of interacting with them. From Windows Phone to Mego to BlackBerry 10 and even going back to WebOS on the Palm devices. Competition forced brands to think outside the box and it was really wonderful. These days we only have two options, Apple and Google. And both of them continue to polish the same operating system they've introduced and the same user experience that they've had for over a decade ago. And I find the user experience of iOS and Android almost mind-numbingly unimaginative. Even Android skins, which are supposed to be creative, different takes on how you interact with Android, follow exactly the same usage patterns. And using one is almost exactly the same as using every other one, minus a fresh coat of paint and a couple of extra features here and there. It's truly a shame as software innovation was a big reason you used to get excited about new technology and how it's going to develop back in the day. Unfortunately, I think most Android OEMs these days completely lack any imagination. They're also too afraid to experiment. So we get stock Android with a bit of makeup here and there, and oftentimes the colors and interface design that they use is super tacky. Or some of them just offer you iOS clones. I don't know which one is worse, but I continue to find myself looking for something more. And no, the ability to use third-party launchers is no excuse in my opinion for this whatsoever. We're left at the mercy of brands that think offering slightly faster charging every year is the definition of innovation. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to support me and subscribe if you're enjoying my content. And I shall see you in the next one.